You've si- yeah. If you say you're going to do something at one o'clock, you do it at one o'clock. You don't do it at two o'clock because then you've had an hour to think about it. And now it becomes an hour harder. So I mean, you say you're going to show up at the 10 at six o'clock and you show up at 6.02. <laughs> <laughs> what? Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> when you are training, you want to train with people that are, are better. Like, 100% but, pushing your boundaries. Yeah, exactly. You want to run with the bloke that's a, that's a quicker runner because you're going to run faster. Eventually, you will progressively overload and get better. Mm. I mean, it's a, it's a bit of a no-brainer there. It work, you surround yourself with hungry animals, you're going to go for it as well. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's one of today's challenges, even um, with our contractors. Some of them, you know, the reliability is hard at the moment. That's one of the biggest challenges. But um, I feel coming into the end of this year, it's starting to starting to change. Everybody can see things are closed, uh, getting a bit quiet. So, you know, everybody's wanting to communicate and make sure what's going on going forward. And you can work and make as much money as you want, but... Mm. You don't get the time back, so no, that's, that's very right. important. And I think they'll say that honestly for me, Miles and Jason. Yeah, that's basically the the core of our business. People want to be part of a winning team. People can find a better version of themselves if they choose. Hmm. You just need to go start some shit. Action is all that matters. Be a man of your word. I think I look back now and I'm like, well, that took some guts. Be kind. Be kind. Be kind. See you at the top. New episode every Wednesday. You blokes rolling in at 11.05 eating saladas. Relax. Mate, this morning you rolled into the 10 at 6.02 and we had a 6 <laughs> I reckon it was 6.01 booking. and 45 seconds. I don't care. You've got to be there two minutes before, mate. If you're not, if you're not there 15 before, minutes you're not early, you're 15 minutes late. Yeah. Exactly. And he's yes. the host too, I think. But mate, it's that. just dis- disorganisation from, from there. Just holding down the fort, keeping everyone active in the morning, make sure we're all go-getters, chasing worms. Carrying I've logs. usually eaten all of them before you guys get there, so... Boys, well, welcome aboard, boys. We've got uh good to be here. We've got Harry. Welcome. Long time listener, first time Potter. Co-host. Co-host, yeah, yeah he's co-host. Yeah. Shit. Exciting, that, boys. Thanks for having age. me. No, yeah, looking forward to it. It's, uh, as we said, long time listener. I love what you boys have been sort of getting about and uh, sharing with a whole plethora of hosts, it's, uh, guests. It's been good. So, happy to be here. Awesome. A bit of, probably a little bit of, uh, a bit of context. You are... You were the early, you were the OG. You were the OG shit sitting on your couch there in your old house and yeah. where the where the idea was born. Can you give us a bit of context there, H? I mean, take us back, what, three years ago or two years ago, sitting in 2020, 2021. Um, well, I was actually living in the Gold Coast, I believe, and I'd come back down for a couple of weeks and we, you'd come around to our house in Eaglemont and we were sitting there. You had this idea for a podcast. We were just going there, brainstorming it out. So um, no, it was exciting back then, and I think we shot a couple pilot episodes. Benny was going hammer and tong at building a new studio, as he is the madman. Yeah, didn't um, we use a bottle of wine for a mic? I think we did use a bottle of red. <laughs> Sounds so standard at the Walkley mic. household. <laughs> yeah, yep. So. Then, do we crack it after it and then get through it or not? Oh mate, there's been too many of those. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, but. Um, then it just obviously... And then, to, you, and then you bailed, then you left to the Goldie. Yeah, had to and go we, back. Had we to had go. to fill the chair with others. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. So um, missed opportunity there. But look, it's uh, come full circle. And you're, and you're back in Melbourne now? But yeah, just relocated four weeks ago. Um, was been living up on the Gold Coast for the last three years. I moved up there to study. Got that uh, commerce degree out the way. Was working for a bit. And then uh, inevitably work brought me back down here. So, um, I mean... Sort of sliding doors back to here, I guess. Yeah, nice. Love it, love it. Now, you guys are mates. Yeah, I mean... Apparently, the way you get into each other doesn't sound like <laughs> it, but, it's but all there, love. Is, there is a bit of a relationship There's here. a bit of Bruce-y. bromance here sometimes. It's all love. I mean, what we played footy together from a fairly young age, yeah. but um, I mean... I reckon there was a barley trip in about... I mean, it was, it was going to the gym and then it turned into a barley trip with with your family. And we just um, just blossomed from there. Yeah. Oh. Uh, don't think there's a day that we don't call each other. You always call me. That's because I'm up <laughs> earlier, mate. I'm on my way to work at about seven o'clock. You're just getting out of bed. That's not true at all. <laughs> He's just chomp, every- chomping on his worms. Oh, knows, mate, I've already digested the worms by the time that comes around. <laughs> <laughs> the early birds get the worms. So cool. We've got a relationship there. So we can look forward to a fair bit of banter. Yep. Guys, this morning, mm-hmm. everyone was up early. Oh, uh, yeah. Around, around the 10. Yeah, we hit the 10 nice and early. Harry, well, well, we welcomed Harry with uh, open arms to our Little Fish walking crew around the 10, 6 a.m. Friday mornings. Had yeah. you already been to the gym, though? I had this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pumps yeah. my iron this morning. Did you? 
Fuck, there's mayo on that. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> you pulled in. You pulled in. Where'd you mean? <laughs> Why would you be? Nah, I came straight from home this morning. Rest day. Oh, because yeah. you don't. Yes, you've moved. Nah, I moved. Yes. So actually in the process of trying to find a new gym. Oh. But. Um, Do you we'll go see- to the gym? Ah. Uh, here hell? and there. Oh, here we go. There's a lot of banter going on here, boys. <laughs> um, yeah. Love it. So, what's your typical morning like, Harry? Mate, usually up at about 4.30 in the morning. Roughly, the alarm goes off, trying to get out by 4.35 and um, getting to the gym roughly just about 5 o'clock or thereafter. Get in an hour or so of training, whether it's in the gym, going for a run, ride. You, I know you like your triathlons. I was doing a bit of those. so it's You don't ride any, anymore. Not anymore. I'm retired. Um, Got a puncture. I don't know how to fix it. Yeah, no <laughs> career's idea. Career's over. Career's <laughs> over. Um, but no, yeah, getting out to some form of training about 5 o'clock in the morning. Come home, have a coffee about six o'clock, make some brekkie and, and some lunch and head off to work at about seven. Um, but if I can get in a nice walk or a swim at some stage, I mean, coming from the Gold Coast, it was, I'd go for a walk along the beach and have a swim and then go to work, which uh, was the best way to start your day. But back down here, it's a little bit colder. So I'm just sticking with the gym and the, the coffee before work and it's uh, doing the job. Lovely, mate. So a bit of a go-getter as well. Yeah, I usually hear it all about it about quarter past seven every morning as well. <laughs> to be fair, I do call you and ask what your training looks like this morning as well. Yeah, no, I've always done something. Training for that 70.3, how's that coming along? It's coming along well, mate. We're a week out now, so it's all, uh, not to oh, timestamp this, but anyway, yeah, week out from the 70.3, the half Ironman, so body's feeling good. Um, had a rest day, obviously, Friday mornings, and then um, crack in on a Saturday, and, and then... Um, See how we go on the on the big day. It's looking like a pretty warm day. So You're looking pretty fit, mate. I um Thanks mate. Filling out yet the- to see underneath the shirt. Not that I'd see it every day, but it's You do see it every day. I know. <laughs> um Are you feeling fit? Yeah, body's really to go. Like taper, um you kind of just itching to get going now. Like it's it's gotten to that point where you're fit, you're ready to go. Just sort of it's all just short, sharp efforts at the moment, but ready to to crack in, try and Crack the sub five and a half hour mark, which I think is uh, definitely achievable. But um, yeah, mate, body's feeling good. And Pete, your mornings would look a little bit different with the uh, kids and especially coming from down you the You obviously don't listen to the, the podcast, Harry, because we speak about this fairly often. Yeah. G-Town. No, no, it's not totally dissimilar, but get up early. Mm. Try and grab some worms on the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, nah, try and get to the office around 6, 6.30 and then go do a walk and yeah. some bits and bobs, have a shower. I do see it on Strava here and there that you're doing those. Nah, I dropped off Strava. <laughs> yeah. The numbers weren't much job. <laughs> I miss the Strava king. I've got to get the numbers up. So. I was really, I always looked forward to your kudos. I was, I'm, yeah, I'm good at giving kudos. Yeah. Always love sh- a comment as well, which comments. is always exciting. Got to share the love, mate. No one shares enough love. Oh, mate, Everyone's I'm... like, like it's going out of fashion, you know. Mate, I give, love, give, I'm, give. I love, love Strava. Give Follow the me. love. <laughs> All right, boys. Let's sneak into this pod. It's a Little Fish and Friends pod today. And quickly, Benny is off working on Townhouse, Masterclass and Network, which is going to go into the beta phase, which will be coming at you soon. Our legend team will be in there. Going to convince H to be in there. Marks will be in there. I'll be in there. So we'll bring you more details, but it is coming out and is going to be amazing. So if you're interested in property development, making a bit of extra money, a bit of personal development, it's something you definitely need to entertain. Mate, I'm looking forward to it. You're pretty excited by it. I'm very excited to be able to tap into the minds of uh, the engine room downstairs with Little Fish at any stage of the way and um, learn as much as possible in the process. I mean, it's really open slather, is it not? Oh, I think it's... Yeah, it's it's unprecedented what it is and, and what we're providing here. So, yeah, we're trying to give as much as we can, mm. as much value as we can to our community. And um, So much know. time and effort has been put into this as well. Benny's Correct. locked himself away for bloody 12 months and you've been filming early mornings and late nights. Yeah. So, yeah. There's so. a bit there. Hopefully, hopefully it comes together. But a lot of hard work's been done, but then there'll be a lot of, lot of effort from the team to, to keep the value running and keep the information flowing and the value flowing. So... I think it'll be pretty big, but that'll be in the new year. Yep. Exciting. All Very right, exciting. Lads. Little Fish and Friends number four. Today's guest is an OG builder. He works with our Little Fish uh, development company, him and his brothers, uh, amazing builders, quality builders in Melbourne, and they have a bit of fun along the way. Uh, they've been around for a long time, and they've been out, been in our stable for a long time, so definitely a reliable go-to, so we thought it'd be amazing to bring him in for an awesome chat 
Uh, and because it's a Little Fish and Friends episode, there will be random reels. PK's random reels. PK's random reels, which I don't know what they are. But um, but yeah. you're going to bring them to the table, Marcus. So that's going to be pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but just quickly, I Bryce's brother, Miles, who... I asked to come on the pod today. He flicked it over. I flicked past it. Hot potato. You got turned down. <laughs> yeah, I got turned down. So he flicked, me, he flicked me to the better looking one, Bryce, <laughs> uh, to come on. And he hasn't even rocked up. He said he was going to rock up, have a beer and watch the show, Miles. But he's sitting back at the office having a beer, doing nothing. So anyway, mate, that's for you. That's a public call, call out. Calling you out. <laughs> Bryce is here. He's, he's wearing the colours, the JBM, and you're not. So you better be at home making, making some money. Um. So anyway, excited to get to Bryce and JBM Builders. Let's do it. All right. Welcome back to Australia's number one podcast. We are the Little Fish. We speak to the big fish about town each and every week. Please like, share, subscribe, five-star review. The boys will be in there commenting. Uh, please enjoy the content. Let us know what you're thinking. But we genuinely love the support, the DMs that we get, the emails we get. It's amazing. And today's a ripper because, you know, guys like this, a lot of our community can relate to. Mm. His problems, his wins, uh, I think, uh, yeah, you know, they're a lot closer to home to our community. So it'll be good to unpack a bit of those. Um, what else we got, boys? I just want to get into the mic. When Harry got the call up, how did that feel, mate? Mate, I mean, the thing was, for the last year, you've sort of been sitting here and it's been awesome to watch her, but it, it, on, in all honesty, it is a chair that I was wanting to fill for... A so you've been eyeing it off. I, I, I actually... I, I eyeing off I, your kill shot. I actually have been. I think I've been nipping at his heels a little <laughs> bit. Um, but no, honestly, I when you, I throw back a while back, we had a conversation and sort of said Marcus would be perfect for it and... Yeah, he he has been, and uh, I mean, I was up in Queensland, so obviously it didn't work out. But um, something I was always interested in, passionate about, with uh, the brainstorming back those years ago, as we said. Um, but yeah, no, it was just excited to sort of have a few conversation with conversations with some uh, inspiring and interesting people. Were you pumped with the appointment, Brucey? Oh mate, I'm stoked! Yeah, it's nice to have this idiot rolling around with me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think when I uh, when I got the gig on the podcast, I called Harry and he hung up on me when I told him. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, "I've got some I got some news." I hung up on him because I knew exactly what was happening because I spoke to I Pete about you, two you hours beforehand, yeah. and then he calls me back and he goes, "You already know, don't you?" I said, "Yep." <laughs> I said, "Congratulations! Just know I'm happy for you, <laughs> but also know that I hate you." <laughs> So just I'm just question without notice. You boys are circa the same age. Yes. Yeah. So I was in I was in the year level above Harry, but yeah, same, same age. age. Same, same age. Same age. So different gen. You know, the average age is well down. I think I estimated about 27 years. Leno is our average age. 27 years. So I'm feeling pretty good. No, no, I put in the calculator. I got it. <laughs> Point something maybe, but um, so I'm pretty excited by that. Making yep. me making feeling- making me feel youthful. Keeping good. you young. What's uh what's going on out there? You boys, you boys, single? You know what are you doing? You obviously a bit of fitness there. Like, mate, talk to me. Like, mate, we got to figure out how to talk to women first. <laughs> well, he says he tells me he's a guru. Oh, <laughs> oh that is not true. <laughs> oh. okay, Can you me. give me some tips? <laughs> I don't know, mate. They usually they talk to me, so. Do we have to edit? They're, we're not editing I, that I, I, at I, all. I, that that was I'm not sure why I've just said that. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what's what's happening as 21-year-olds, 22-year-olds? Harry's the end of there. You're working, you go get it. Come on. What, with my mum sending me reels? <laughs> nah. We well, had two dates cancelled on you this week, didn't you? Uh, one. One cancelled on me. And, and you um, cancelled on the other one. Yeah, well, look. I mean, I had... Um, I've just moved back, so, okay. so I'm just trying line. to I'm trying to sort get my feet on the ground and. Is it a different get, vibe down here? It definitely is. Um, I mean, getting a, like down here is much more of a going out vibe, is it not? I mean, a lot of people that I speak to, even talking to my sister, she goes, she, they, everyone meets people going out. I'm um, I'm not too much like I do have my fun and I do go out, but I do pick my weekends much like Marcus. We do. Um, I mean, we're probably a little bit. In bed by on nine thirty on a Saturday usually, night at the yeah. moment, so yeah, I'm not yeah. doing much, but but um, yeah, I mean at the gym, somewhere stuff like that, just around there. But yeah, both single. Marcus, I um, haven't had an update, but me, but, no, there's nothing going on here, mate. Yeah. I'm just dialed into my bike. <laughs> <laughs> Shit house, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, that's all right. 
Anything yeah. else to give, boys? Or is that is that? Oh, I mean, yeah. Is that, is that is that the depth of both of you? I mean, most bit, bit puddleish. I mean, <laughs> I think we just talk to each other, and <laughs> that's about it. it. Yeah, yeah, most mornings yeah. we're on the phone to each other discussing. It, it is good because we, we solve the world's problems at about seven fifteen. Sounds like you both are in a relationship. Uh yeah, yeah. With each other, it, I'd say I'm second rate to your housemate Ben, but Benny does. Ben, like we 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 moved up to Queensland together, and then we lived together for the last three years, and both moved back together. So. And you guys are now back living together. Yeah, and we did Europe for two months together, a couple yeah. couple of weeks ago. So he's definitely the um, he's. Yeah, we're, that's right. You can with say de facto it. relationship, <laughs> husbands. Um, <laughs> but um, no, Marcus is now that we're back in the same state. I mean, up there, oh, we're he's still, nearly nearly snuck back in the number one. I think it could be position. an open type relationship. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, we do speak every day. Um, it is awesome to have someone on the same page where we're often talking about training, and then that leads you, into work. Do you and, think you boys are sort of similarly driven, similar interests? You without know? a doubt. You know, heading, 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 heading on the same path. Without a doubt, like we're often speaking about what we want to do five, ten years down the track, and trying to figure out how what we're doing right now is going to get us there. And um, mate, he is someone I do look to for when I want advice or when I want something, when I want to spell something out. I mean, even a couple of weeks ago, I was sort of struggling with the whole moving back down here because it is such a big change from that lifestyle up there. Mm. Um, and I think I just dumped. Everything that I was feeling on him for twenty minutes, and then at the end he just goes, "Mate, it's it it's not uncommon." So it is good to have someone there that just gets no it. matter what gets it and is there for you. Good to have that support piece in your life, mm. and it goes both ways. Like pick up the phone, and Harry's always good for a chat, whether it be training, work, uni, girls, fucking anything, <laughs> living, bloody moving out of home, whatever it is. We um yeah we bounce bounce off each other pretty well. So it's good to have uh good to have him back on the on the podcast, which is uh. Exciting, big, mm. big. Mm. All right, boys. Well, do we do we look at the reels, Brucey? Are you ready to ready to fly into my reels? And this is PJ's where we random reels. where we get some random reels and we make some commentary. I don't even know what they are, and I don't think you know what they are either. No, no, I have no idea what these are. So yeah, so we, we we've got a bit of a group chat going on on Instagram. Ah, okay, give people the context. Yeah, we got a, we got a group chat going on Instagram. Harry will have to uh, might have to make. I got left one. out of that one, so yeah. I'm just wondering where that is. That's right. Invite will come soon, but um, no. Nah, first th- time. <laughs> Won't be the last. Peter, Benny, and myself, we do have a group chat and we send in some little clips that we like. Um, and uh, yeah, occasionally they might find their way to this, uh, the random reels here. So here's our first one. Oh, I like this. I like this. This is what Chris Eubank Jr. said to me, which really stuck with me. He said, My dad flew me to Cuba. Um, and they, we had a training camp out there and they surprised me. They put the, the heavyweight champion of Cuba in the ring with me. He's not, he's like a middleweight or something. He gets in the ring. This heavyweight storms across to him, knocks him so hard. He flies out of the ring and hits the floor, dead leg as he, and he's laying on the floor. He says, he said to me, I looked up at the ring and I saw this massive Cuban heavyweight stood there. And he said, I realized in that moment that I had to get back in the ring because if I didn't, it would let the demons in. And another instance of when he talks about the demons more specifically was on his story about the treadmill. He goes, if I'm running on a treadmill and I get to mile nine and I get complete cramp in one of my legs and I know I've told myself I'm going to run 10 kilometers today, I will have to limp the last mile, even if no one's watching because I can't let the demons in. And if I let the demons in, they'll show up in the 11th round of a championship fight when there's 50,000 people watching me in the audience. And I know deep in myself story that I'm the type of person that quits when things get hard because I got off that treadmill at mile nine when no one was watching. It would modify my self story. The commitments we keep to ourselves and what we do when no one's watching is the most persuasive evidence that governs everything we then do every day thereafter. And this is for me, it was a huge revelation in my life because- Very interesting. How's that one boys? That's right up your alley. Yeah, I guess I, I I think I sent that one in, so that was that hit the hit list. But the reason why I thought of that is because Benny, who's obviously not here, but he always says how you do anything is how you do everything, and I think I like that, that one. Yeah, a lot. So I think that um that resonated with uh with us, and I guess resonated with me for my training because the early morning wake ups go off, and it's pretty easy to you know roll over and go back to bed, or if you you know you've got say forty minutes of training or two hours of training, and if you cut yourself short to an hour thirty, come race day. You just don't want to be questioning yourself on, on did you that. did you put it in all the effort? So I think that's a that's a good little lesson. How you do anything is how you do everything. Um, just be diligent with with things, I guess. What what about you, H? You've uh you know you've done the marathon. What what about those those 
kept or unkept commitments to yourself? To be honest, it really, that that does make me think. Where he said oh, I will have to limp that extra mile, mate. As I, as as you mentioned there with the New York Marathon last year, um, I got to about thirty five kilometres in and had someone cut me off and just copped double hammy cramps, um, and I was battling them for the next seven k's, whatever it was, and then my knee started to really trouble me, so I was popping anti inflammatory pills, trying to get as many salt tabs in as well, and I actually. About 38 kilometers, just coming up towards the Central Park. I, ha- I, I actually had to stop because the cramps got so bad. And this random guy run out into the, across the track, jumped the fence. A spectator. A spectator, 200 mil can of full sugar Coke. He's just, he's, he's half drunk it. He's like, he's, <laughs> he's drinking it. It's like you've gone to the 7-Eleven and bought it and you're drinking it. And he's gone, mate, have this. I was just like, bang, put it. I was anything at that stage because I was so far away from a... Um, from the next station, yeah. put that down, kept going. But I mean, as he said, had to limp over. We, um, I'm sure we'll touch on it going forward, but there was just so much commitment to that EB research foundation and mm. the $75,000 raised and amazing effort. Yeah. It was just to keep going. How's that guy with the can of Coke? Was he, did you see him again after that or not? Random. Mate, random. Didn't see you at the finish line. Did not see him at the finish line. 38 kilometers in. Thanks, mate. If you're listening, thank you. He's a big fan of the show. I needed that. (laughs) I needed that. Four to go, mate. That's crazy. Gave up his can. Yeah. Yeah. No, so uh, that helped a lot. Um, Actually, I don't, I'd never heard of a can of Coke solving cramps. I knew salt tabs and pickle juice. Um, Maybe it was a placebo, but um, sugar hit never hurts, I guess, when when you're flying. Yeah. Uh, Amazing. But yeah, great. Great reel. Good Great reel, up. Brucey. It's a, yeah, a lot of these commitments you have to keep with yourself. No one else is going to uh, hold you to account to a lot of things. So mm. it's you against um, against the majority of it. So Don't let the demons in. Mm. All right. Number two here. Let's hit it up. I like the first one. It's a strong start. The quote that I've fallen in love with, the magic you are looking for is in the work you're avoiding. <laughs> Fuck, dude. The magic you are looking for is in the work you're avoiding. Short and sweet from PK. What do you think of that one, PK? Yeah, I liked that one. Well, because that's the thing. Like when, as you travel along this mission, the things that you get, the things that you get the most satisfaction from, and the most gratification are the things that are bloody hard, mm. and likely the things you're avoiding. If you're on the weekend, you go, I've got to, got to have that hard conversation the next week. I love trying to plug them in earlier on the week because mm. then you bang, you get that dopamine of bang, I did that, that's done, that was hard. It was an awkward conversation, whatever it is, but it's done and then you've got the whole week to look forward to. So I think if you can, I think the magic that we're looking for is in the things we're avoiding. I like that, that you say, you throw back to that start of the week. You're not dreading it the whole week. You're not, uh, slowing and sort of procrastinating to that and yeah. it's slowing down your other work. You get in, get it done, get it out of the way and it's probably going to turn out better than you actually expected anyway. Oh, I think 100%. the more you think about something, the harder it gets in your own head. So yeah. to knock it out, but as soon as it comes in, you know, you're making decisions quicker and it just it does become easier. If, yeah. if you say you're going to do something at one o'clock, you do it at one o'clock, you don't do it at two o'clock because then you've had an hour to think about it and now it's becomes an hour harder so i mean you say you're yeah. gonna show up at the 10 at six o'clock and you show up at 602 <laughs> yeah. what? Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah spot on boys i think that's i think that's a big one um as as you meander through there's there's heavy things that you need to tackle and you need to you need to get into them quick and then exactly what you said Bruce. you can't let them you can't think too much about it because you will build up this this reality that it is worse than what it is and when you get some yeah, get some context, get some perception about a lot of different things in life. It's not probably not actually that big. But mm. go bowl it over, get it out of the way. That's where the magic is. On to the next. I like it. Strong start. Jesus. All right, here we go. Real number three. We find that the average Brit, average German, average French person works about sixteen hours, sixteen hundred hours a year. Average executive or business owner works about two thousand hours a year. So what you do is you take your annual income and you divide it by two thousand. Let's say you're earning hundred thousand pounds a year. Divided by two thousand, that means that you're earning fifty pounds an hour. This is your hourly rate. That means, by law, the Ricardo's law, law of comparative advantage, is you don't do anything that pays less than fifty dollars an hour. You only do things that pay you fifty dollars an hour or more, and everything else you delegate. If there's something that someone else can do for 
10 pounds an hour, you hire somebody to do that. 20 pounds an hour, 30 pounds an hour, you keep hiring people who can do things at a lower hourly rate than yourself. Now here's the great discovery, and this again is life changing. I call it the law of three. The law of three says that no matter how many things you do, how many tasks you do in a week or a month, and it's usually 20 or 30, three of those tasks account for 90% of your value. You make a list of all of your tasks. If you could only do one thing on this list, one task on this list all day long, which one task would have the greatest positive impact on your career? So you put a circle around it. Then you say, if you could only do two things all day long, which would be number two? And you put a circle around that. If you could only do three things all day long, which would be number three? And you realize, oh my God, everything else is secondary. I like that one as well. What did you take from that, Marcus? Sounds like uh, coming from, I'm obviously not a business owner, but I guess that's sort of pitched towards business owners. So, PK, what do you reckon of that one? Ah, no, I think it's a good one. I think it's a good one. As a, yeah, like you say, as you're building out your team, you start to look at, you know, say you've got your, your business hierarchy and you're looking at what each line does. The idea is as, as you know, you get higher into that uh, pyramid, that the, that the events and, and the jobs that they do in that are, are more highly leveraged events and jobs and they're they're more valuable to the business. So I think it's important that wherever you are in that hierarchy that you're always striving to get better and to get into those more valuable um, acts, I suppose, and roles and responsibilities because as a business, you look at those and you go, well, who's doing that? Who's doing that? They're valuable. Um, you know, the fact that that person can make that conversation, had that have that hard phone call, well, then suddenly that's more valuable than somebody that makes 30 phone calls, but easy phone calls or to different people and doing lesser leveraged events. So I think the harder things you can do are, and um, more valuable things you can do for the business, um, yeah, the better. I liked it, especially a part, the part of even if you do pay them 30, pound, 30 bucks an hour and you're, you would charge out $50 an hour, if someone can get it done for 30, you're then making 20 and they're probably going to be more efficient than you anyway. Yes, well, they're, they're focusing strictly on those tasks and then you can push on and do higher leveraged things that are, that are more valuable, ideally. Because exactly what he said, you need to identify the things that you can do for your business that are super valuable and not get stuck in the things that aren't as valuable that potentially someone else can do. That's good insight, boys. Mm. PK's on the money there. Harry's That's just saying he likes it, so that was good. <laughs> All right, I reckon we got one more in us and then we'll bring, uh, bring our guest on. Oh, yeah, good work, Marcus. And so, Gatesy. I've built a lot of my success God. off finding these truly gifted people and not settling for B and C players, but really going for the A players. And I found something. I found that when you get enough A players together, when you go to, through the incredible work to find you know, five of these A players, they really like working with each other because they, they've never had a chance to do that before. And they don't want to work with B and C players. And so it becomes self-policing. And they only want to hire more A players. And so you build up these pockets of A players and it propagates. And that's what the Mac team was like. They were all A players. And um, A graders, boys. You don't want to be surrounded by B and C graders, do you? Nah, like when we were playing footy, Harry, you were always in the twos. So. Yeah, but you got to know your strengths. That's why I jumped to the triathlons and the uh, running and uh, just shut all over you there. So it's whatever, you know? No, but as but like in all honesty, when you are training, you want to train with people that are, are better. Like 100%, but, pushing your boundaries. Yeah, exactly. You want to run with the bloke that's a, that's a quicker runner because you're going to run faster. You're going to ride with the guy that's going to ride quicker and he's stronger in the ride because – Eventually, you will progressively overload and get better. Mm. I mean, it's a, it's a bit of a no-brainer there. It, it work. You surround yourself with hungry animals. You're going to go for it as well. Yeah, love it. Love it. I think I'm proud to say that I reckon the fish is filled with A graders, but it's something you've got to work on and mm. something you've got to be diligent on and make sure you get the right people in the team. If the wrong ones are there. You've got, to, you've got to sort that out as well. But yeah, you've got to keep high performers with high performers because I think they, exactly what H is saying, they want to challenge themselves. They want to be better. Um, they want to be surrounded with people they're learning from um, and working as hard as them. I like it, boys. Well done. Well done. Well done, MB. MB's reels. PK's random reels. We'll, uh, we'll get Harry in that group chat at some point, I reckon. Oh, yeah. I got to earn your tickets first, mate. Won't, won't expect it to come through anytime soon, boys. It's fine. <laughs> There'll be a crazy flood of... of uh, Oh, yeah. Goggins oh. activity. Maybe. <laughs>
Carrying the boats. Carrying logs. All right, good work, boys. Good bit of chat. Let's get into the pod. So Bryce from JBM, great builders, great friends of ours, kind of blokes always looking for a beer. Every Friday you get a text and go, mate, are we going to the pub for a beer? Um, but yeah, great blokes, great blokes to have around and um, trusted uh, amazingly by by little fish. So come on, mate, come on board. Get over here. Let's get it into it. Been patient. He's been patient with all that. Listening all to that us ramble. BS going on. <laughs> So yeah, Welcome. mate. Good so, Thanks for having me. Yeah, good on you, mate. So talk right into the microphone. That's it. Yeah, no that's a boy. Um, so quickly, Miles. He, I just got a text back from him before that said he's busy next time. <laughs> How convenient. <Yeah. laughs> so that's where he's at. So you're flying the flag. Everyone needs to fly the flag, or someone needs to fly the flag. Well, they think I've got a big mouth, so. <laughs> perfect for perfect for a podcast. Hey mate, can you uh can you give us a bit of context? We've got the J, B, and the M. Yeah, Obviously so we've got the B here yeah, today. well, Jason, Bryce, and Miles, basically. So amazing. So brothers and brother-in-law. Yeah, so me and Miles are brothers, and Jason and Miles are brother-in-laws. Nice. Yeah. Now, where did it start for you guys? Because you guys weren't builders all no, the time. No, no, we long. were um we we're all plumbers. Beginning, um, had our own plumbing companies separately each. And uh, we felt like we're in a bit of a rut, not going anywhere. So we we decided to join up as a plumbing company together, um, which we did for a few years, and yeah. transitioned into building five years probably after that. What uh so so what made you think it'd be a good idea to to join forces? What did you think would be the advantage? It's just of the that? extra set of hands. I think you know we, me and my brother were doing some smaller things together, and Jason and his brother were doing some smaller things, and we just decided that we try get uh, get into some of the bigger jobs. Yeah. So. You know, a few more hands, and uh, that's where we just sort of took off. And the plumbing company built up quite big. We had up to probably fifty employees. Wow! And it just it just ended up getting out of control. So, and the reliability of staff, like you said before, with uh, surrounding yourself with a a players, it's yeah. really hard. So, as you get bigger, it's hard for them to all to be a players. Hard, yeah. Real hard. Do you so, think because it grew so quickly? Yeah, definitely. And we we're know. inexperienced. We were young, so um, we paired it right back. And now it's just the three of us, and 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 it works well. Works perfect. What was what was the go with um obviously being plumbers and and that's the thing. Good you know good tradies they they overlap they learn how to do the whole thing. But going to a building company, what was the edge there? What well, Jason had he, Jason was the first one to get his building license. Yeah. Um. So that when we did merge, he already had it, and we would do mainly plumbing with one building job. Yes. And we enjoyed it more. It's more enjoyable. You do more things hand on. Not so rather than doing probably the same thing, rough in, fit off, rough in, fit off, um, you got to you got to do the whole job. Yep. 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 And then just all start then it went into management and organizing. Um and not as much hands on, but we still try to get in there and be hands on because we enjoy it. Yeah, I had a picture mm. of Jace on the on the digger the other day. <laughs> Digging trenches. Yeah. yeah. How Digging was trenches. um what was your first job? The three of you together? Uh we did a couple of townhouses in Eaglemont uh building job. Yep. Um uh, which worked out quite well, uh, but that was during doing plumbing as well. So, so you did all. You, so you did your plumbing for yourself as as we the were when we started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and moving away from that, you, you're not doing your, the plumbing yourself anymore. No. You're strictly builders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Haven't got enough time. Yeah. So trying to manage everybody, which is a challenge. So, yeah. How do you find that stepping away from the tools and back end management? I suppose as you said, you had 50 guys on board and probably didn't have the structures in place, so it did grow to become that thing where you have stripped it back. So how do you find now that you've been through that experience going yeah, again? We, look, we're, we're probably all still pretty hands-on. As, so we're on the jobs every day, and that's why it worked for us. You know, We're there for anybody needs some help, or we'll generally be sweeping up the jobs, cleaning them, and you know, to make sure that we're touching the jobs we're hands-on, always going to be there. I think that's one of the big ones. Like We obviously manage builders for a living um the ones that are there and touch you know they've got that touch on their sites they know exactly what's happening the trades can feel that you are connected to that site i think the ones that think they can sit in their office and think they're flicking out calendars to trades and that sort of stuff i feel like yeah those trades can be going rogue they can be doing whatever yeah it's hard because then if you turn up to the job and things have been done that aren't right it delays your jobs Cost money, yeah, and you know it's a bad look for everybody having to do things twice too. So yeah, uh, definitely try and stay in touch as much as we can for all the jobs. I yeah. think I think that rubs off throughout the the job, and especially when it gets to completion, you can see that things are thought about when you're there. 
and and you've got that that JBM touch. You know, if you get just let subbies do their thing along the way, stuff's going to come up, and like you say, you do things twice, money yeah. pops up, and mm. you know you, that final finish isn't going to be as good as when say you're there for an hour on a Wednesday and you've thought about that detail and it's it's been executed properly. Yeah, it's, it's even if you are there, and just like for as an example, if you are cleaning the site, you pick up the defects as you're doing it because yeah. you're mm. you're there, you're in the mix, you're getting dirty, getting your hands dirty. Um, so I don't know, it works. It works to keep an eye on everybody. So. I suppose there's no avenue for mixed messaging either because you are there and. I mean, managing those trades and saying, well, no, this is the shared vision of what we are doing. Yeah. They can't have their roundtable discussions when you're not there and things end up not how you planned it. Yeah, it happens a lot. It does. People, they come in and think we're going to do it like this, but we're there and we're saying, well, no, this is the way it needs to be done yeah. for these reasons where they're sort of only thinking about their particular trade when there's lots to follow. So. Yeah, yeah, because often they don't think about what the flow on effect. That's right. Mm. What um what's it like working with family? Like you 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 guys are pretty you know bullish kind of guys. There's a you know a bit a little bit of ego, not crazy, but you you know you can't all confident men. Yeah, for some there reason, must be some Barneys. For so, well, there's not. I don't. There's believe honestly you. not. For some reason, it works. Honestly, yeah. it yeah. does work. Me and my brother will probably have a, a spat every maybe six months, just an argument. But yeah, who's the older brother? Uh me. <laughs> I'm six years older. So. So do you, do you pull that? You can't rank? tell, Miles. <laughs> <laughs> do you pull that rank or? Uh, no, no, we're we're all pretty good. Like we're just all mates as well. Yeah. Which is probably half the reason why it works really well for us because it doesn't matter what happens during the day, what happens at the jobs. At yeah. the end of the day, we'll all meet up and have a beer. That's yeah. and that's 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 the key, right? That's what makes that's, it work. Yeah, yeah, spot on. Because I was, yeah, I was going to say, you know, it sounds does sound great, and from the outside looking in, it looks great, but there must be a reason why it looks great. But yeah, obviously, just, you guys are like leave the leave the footy on the field. You have to. And then, yeah. You have to. Great attitude. You know, we always get up. I don't agree with things they do and vice versa, but at the end of the day, you know, we're all family too, which is comes comes first, so. You can't choose your family, but you can choose your friends. And that, that, that really just stuck out to me there. You're all mates. Yeah, 100%. You know, my brother was my best man. Jason was in my bridal party. And that's just the way, that's the way it is. We yeah. just do things together, so. Love it, love it. Mm. What, what sort of projects are you doing? Like obviously, you know, we've... Um, touched on you do some property development yeah we do um, all your projects yeah <laughs> yeah uh, but, but what, what else I know I, I know you are your expertise potentially are I, I do a lot stuff. of um, I do a lot of renovations extensions yeah um, when working with mum and dad or with the client directly which is I enjoy that because I enjoy the experience I enjoy the journey um, enjoy the scones <laughs> uh, yeah well some <laughs> of our clients they, they don't mind bringing scones and donuts and <laughs> coffees and croissants and stuff so I do enjoy that, but we um we we do some of our own developments as well. But um, majority of it's all client work. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I guess the, the being the three of you, you know, typically we don't usually see you for the townhouses with what with at Little Fish. You leave that to to Miles and Jason. Yeah, generally the the ones that I do they take longer, I guess. Yeah. And I'm on the other side of town, so it's harder to run two or three jobs at the same time. Mm. So I think two's the maximum you can do because there's so many more details, so many more changes. Um, where the the sites are, um, everything's documented. It makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Can we? Um, we've just gone through obviously, you know, a pandemic. Circa the last three years, builders were up in lights during during that time. Really hard to get through. Some fared better than others. From an outsider looking in, you guys fared reasonably well. Like how how was that, and how did you manage manage that, and where and where are things at now? Yeah, it was pretty hard. Like it's the. The the site being shut down to five people and stuff like that and um and all the the delays it took a pretty big toll on us um but you know we worked together and um we tried to work smarter and change some of the things in our business to make sure that we could survive that you know we, there's a couple of times where we think shit it's getting real hard you know we really need to tighten our belt do different things make you know work a lot harder ourselves be on the tools ourselves um to try and you know save some money and make sure that we're going to be all right and it turned out that. You know, we've we've come out of the other side and we've been good, especially with our partners like you guys giving us um, some projects and stuff like that, which helped. You know, so the constant flow of work. Um, but it was a tough, tough couple of years. So, what else did you sort of you alluded to? You guys getting back on the tools to save some money. Is there any other examples that you sort of use along the way to to keep yourselves going? So, uh, some of the jobs, like so, we coming from the plumbing background, it's plumbing and roofing and all that sort of stuff. So, mm. you know, we might have done a couple of roofs or some cladding or the plumbing just to, you know, you're saving that five or ten grand. It goes a long way. Yeah, you know, in that current climate, it's um, it worked out quite well. But we, with our clients, our customers, and our clients and stuff like that, they um, a constant flow of work 
also kept us yeah. kept us ticking over. So, do you think that your business model, you know, versus the fifty plumbers that you had, the business model being a bit bit skinnier, hundred oh, percent, um, you know, directors on the can be on the tools, um, overheads probably a lot lower than you know paying paying wages to fifty yeah. odd people. Yeah, oh, it's, it's you know. just it's a com- complete change. It's a complete flip around the way that we work now, and we probably work less to be honest. Yeah, okay. you know, we've all got young families, so we always they're all and we're all involved and spend time with them as well. So, yeah, it's yep. amazing that you talk about those hard times and the fact that you guys would have been able to sit down, sit down and have those discussions. Were there any times that you really thought that there were it, it was really going to be tough? And I just want to sort of delve yeah, into sometimes. how you guys pivoted there when you got more bills coming in than money coming in. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's that pretty much tells you that you you got to work hard, you got to knuckle down, you got to change something. Yeah, you know, um, and the fact of the matter is that we just we had you know good good contact uh, good contractors, good suppliers, and you've got to be open and honest and let everybody know where you're situated. And everybody was patient, and you know, a couple got strung out a bit longer than others, and and that uh, you know it goes to show that if you you're open, you're honest, and you're true to your your guys, they're gonna look after you. So that el- that element of trust, especially between you and your brothers and your contractors and partners as yeah, well, made a huge difference. That did, yeah. yeah kept, so, kept us going, so. So high communication, relationships. Yeah. Um, communication is definitely key in what we do. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's one of today's challenges, even um, with our contractors. Some of them, you know, the reliability is hard at the moment. That's one of the biggest challenges. But um, I feel coming into the end of this year, it's starting to starting to change. Everybody can see things are closed, uh, getting a bit quiet. So, you know, everybody's wanting to communicate and make sure what's going on going forward. And Yeah. Where's it are? Uh... Where's it heading now, do you think? Because obviously we've seen, you know, crazy inflation, you know, with costs and, you know, somewhat labor and all those sorts of things. So so what, you know, the dollar that, that you could spend three or four years ago is, is you know, getting closer to $2. Um, so where's it, where's it headed? Um, you know, supply chains, labor, um, you know, costs, that sort of stuff. Where, what, where is it headed, do you think? Well, I think the supply chain has improved since uh, COVID sort of come to a bit of an end. Um, with your timber and all that sort of stuff. And some of the prices have dropped as well, which is good. Uh, but the inquiries to us keep coming. We, it's, we haven't really noticed that die off too much. Yep. Um, there's constant inquiries weekly. So, How do you guys get, do you guys, are you guys looking for inquiries or do they tend to come to you through word of mouth? inquiries and- tend to come to us. I mean, like you guys are probably one of our biggest clients as well. So we're constantly getting fed by you guys, but all the independent mums and dads and that, it's all word of mouth and mm. signage on, on jobs and, Instagram and all that sort of stuff. So wait till this uh, podcast drops, mate. You, you won't. <laughs> you'll have to employ someone to take all the leads. <laughs> oh. What are you doing next year? <laughs> <laughs> Got me flowing in hot. <laughs> um, yeah, great, Bryce. What? So Harry, Harry touched on it. Those hard times. You know, I like to hear the the, the big losses, the big wins. But you know, what would what would you say a big win was in? You know, I guess the relationship with your business partners, you know, is there any big jobs you handed over or, or milestones during oh. your business career that, that you think, think fuck, wow. You yeah, know? some of the things we, I don't know if you know, we spent a lot of time at Pentridge yeah. doing the restorations there, f- which we sort of fell into, right? Oh, working at Pentridge? Working, yeah, okay, yeah. working at Pentridge, <laughs> okay, yeah. So right. <laughs> <laughs> just coming out of the plumbing into the building. Um, we uh, well, kept- there was a lot of density, high density in there, wasn't there? Yeah, but we did all the restoration stuff for all the heritage stuff. Ah. Um, so, any- so we kind of fell into it. They called us out to fix a roof leak. And then I got talking to one of the managers and he said, can you, and I'm like, I can do that. I had no idea, yeah. not a clue. And then I could do that, I could do that. And we were there for five years and yeah. had millions and millions of dollars worth of contracts thrown at us to just do these works. And that was one of our, our biggest wins. And that probably put us into a good spot to go through COVID to make sure that we came out the other side as well. Yeah, that great. Attitude. Well, the lesson, what's the lesson in that? That attitude of just <laughs> take I'll it on. Have a go. If, uh, look, yeah. you, you obviously would have had an inkling that you could do it because you'd been in that industry, but also... No idea. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you I go. I was about to say, that doesn't... You don't strike me. Oh, we need to restore that heritage. Stone, blue like, stone yeah, brick blue wall. Blue stones yeah. and cast iron and all that sort of... Add, no idea. No idea. No. But saying if you, you can if do you're it watching, figuring Rob. it out. <laughs> <laughs> if the, Rob, he was the manager, if you're watching... Big I'd fan know, of the show, I'd Rob. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, Robbie was pretty happy in the end because he we're, paid his we're, invoices. We're, and... we're great mates. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, that's that comes back to P- PK mentioned the relationships and your yeah. ability to say yes and, and build that relationship because yeah. like, what a, a roof leak turned into millions of dollars. Worth millions of, contracts. of dollars, and I think the the biggest thing is as well, you just got to be a good person. Yeah. yeah, it's not hard to be a good person. 
be a doer as well. Yeah, just, just don't be a dick. Is yeah. yeah. <laughs> there we go. We can probably stop the pod there. <laughs> That's all we needed to go. Can yeah. get. But um, but I think yeah, I think you're spot on. Be someone like you said. Reliability is a big thing. Yeah. Um, be someone who can solve someone's problem. You know that person had a problem with that. You're going to fix it, and you're a good guy and you're reliable. Um, geez, it's not that hard, is it? It's not that hard. Yeah. And it just blows my mind that there's so many people out there that just don't get that. Yeah. They're just selfish. Like just help people. Yeah. Is is a big thing that I like to do. I like to see other people happy. Yeah. So. Mm. It's a it, yeah. It's a really good ethos because that comes around. That comes around. That person goes great. I'll give them all work. I'll pay the invoice quickly. Um, you know, if they need extension on terms, I'll entertain that. You know, all that, all those credits that you're banking up over the years of work and having that mentality when COVID hits and it's like, yeah. hey, mate. I think it, it saved us in hindsight. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. I believe that. Good people do want to be around good people. And if you're helping them and they're helping you, I mean, it's a, it's a synergistic relationship, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Nice vocab, mate. Ah, uh, that's a big word. <laughs> that is a big word. <laughs> Synergies. And you know, Synergies. I think me, Miles and Jason, and it's, you might laugh at it, we just look at ourselves, we're just a bunch of dopey builders that, that like building nice things and, and like being friends with each other and hanging out and having a good time. So that's And, and doing right by people, by the sounds of it. And that's it. And that's yeah. what we try to do, yeah. Yeah. Well, build, building is a fast pace and can be a stressful industry. So like, you know, you, you, you bring what you do back to just being mates. Like what, what keeps you guys going? Is it, is it the... The beer at the end of the day, or is it like what motivates oh, the, you to the keep going? The phone call at six in the morning, laughing and you know hanging shit on each other yeah. on the way to work, and then the beer in the afternoon, and you know the weekends of going and hanging out and all that sort of stuff. It's just I know you, you guys have been to your boats and your fishing as well. Aren't you? Yeah, we do heaps of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that keeps you keeps you going. Yeah. So I uh, just and I don't know people. I say, how do you do it? I go, well, I don't know. It just works. Yeah. Love what you do. You never work a day in your life. Pretty much. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a couple. <laughs> Um, no, no, that's great, mate. Sounds like great synergies amongst the amongst the three of you, and yeah, that's you know that in turn becomes your why. You're all you're all great family men. Yep. Um, you that know, is number, and it's number one to all of us. Yeah. I think we've all got the same morals about being there, being present for our kids, and all that sort of stuff. And yeah. That, you know, and that ties in to the structure of our company and the fabric. That that's, and again, it's being a good person. Yeah, spot on. Like it sounds like you, pro- and that's the thing I'm assuming, but you probably haven't put a great deal of thought into your your values and your ethics as a company. But if you had to challenge yourself and say that, you guys are going bang, families first, being doing right by people's first. All these things that all you guys hold true means that your day to day, week in, week out, it's it you, all know, follows, yeah. you, you know it works. If Jace goes, I need to do this for my family, you guys are like, great. Yeah. You know, hey, I'm 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 gonna approach this situation with this client this way and they go, Yeah, great, because you're doing right by people. Yeah. So it sounds like you guys are yeah, an amazing fit with with similar beliefs. It does, and it, that's that's what I like to. I think we are, and it shows that we got repeat work. Clients want to come back to us, and we're having a good time doing it. So, love it. Have love you it, had have you like some mentors along the way that have taught you those things, or that sort of come naturally to you guys? Oh, I guess it's just growing up. I started working when I was real early. I left school 15, 16 ish to start plumbing, mm. and I worked with an older bloke and sort of grew up with him. He was like a an, an additional father figure. Um, and I guess just getting into the real world early for all of us. Yeah. But that's just what teaches you a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Love it. Love it. Um, got a couple of questions down here. Um, Benny's put them there. Shout out, Benny. He hasn't just left us in the lurch. He's he's (laughs) thanks, Benny. (laughs) Kept us flying straight. Thanks, Benny. What's he got? What do you do for fun? Uh, I go fishing, forward driving, mow my lawns (laughs) with a cold (laughs) beer. Yeah. What beer? What beer do you drink? Uh, VB. Oh, my boy. <laughs> can. In a oh, can. can. The very oh, best. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, no stubbies. Oh, that's that's full savage can. <laughs> <laughs> Love a cold yeah. baby stubby. Um, if you could sit down and talk with anyone, who would it be and why? Uh, generally my kids probably. Yeah. Just because it's they make me happy. So. Love it. Yeah. Mm. Love it. How, old are they, how old are your kids? Six and nine. Six so, and nine. Yeah. Going on. Shout out, big fans of the show. Yeah, they are massive fans. <laughs> <laughs> they will yeah, be yeah. soon. What's up? You know, we're coming to the end of 2023. You know, you guys are doing a great job with what you're doing. Is it just going to be business as usual for you guys? Just one foot in front of the other, well, or, I think or so. is there any? Is there any thoughts on? You know, it sounds like you're very comfortable with your with your pod. You know, with your inner yeah. circle. Is there any thoughts on a little bit of growth or um, adding another person into the machine? Yeah, uh, no. 
Because you know what, it works. It's just been working yeah. for so so yeah. good for so long, and it and we've got a great work life balance. We honestly do. We 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 work every day, but you know we're always home picking up the kids yeah. and doing that stuff. And I don't want that to change. So I don't want to get bigger, and we're all comfortable. Yeah, right. Yeah, it sounds like you guys have created what you sort of half set out to do. Yeah, and now it's like, hey, let's let's yeah. run with it. Maybe try and maybe try and do an extra couple of developments ourselves per year. Yeah. But you know, even that, it's not it's not that important to us. Yeah. As long as we can come to work every day, we're getting paid. We're you know having fun doing it. Love mm. it. So. Love it. Love it, boys. Any more queries for <laughs> our our great builder here? I guess just it sounds like you know, fifteen starting an apprenticeship. You you sort of just. You did the hard yards yourself, didn't you? Like, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you had a few days on the sho- on the shovel, I bet. I had plenty of days on the shovel. <laughs> and that's what I see today from what, what, what I learned and how I did it compared to the guys, the younger guys today. It's, it's just so different. Yeah. You know? Did, would, you, would you ever, you know, you spoke about having that second almost father figure. Would you like to do that and, and almost learn, sorry, to, and almost teach someone and, and come under your wing? Does that... Oh, it, just, it doesn't suit what we do because we're not pr- as present, yeah. I guess. As what yeah. as you know, he was there. We were working seven to five every day. Mm. You know, together in a van driving around. That's now we're all over the place. But um, you know, and I got my hands full with the kids, so trying to teach <laughs> trying to be a plan or? feather to them. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> will they uh? Will they go down any any building routes, or you'll yeah, steer them my, away? Well, my kids have got they got a, get a workshop set up in the garage, and they love building stuff. So yeah, maybe succession plan. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> there you go. The JBM could change into any sort of letter yeah, 2.0. Yeah. 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 Love it. Anything more from you, H. Boyle? Right. Yeah, no, it's similar, similar to Marcus there, putting in the hard yards early and just learning those lessons early of those 50 staff and moving through. I just really like that piece there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And to get where you are now, even even to the point where work-life balance, a lot of people talk about that and don't do it. Um, however... You are being that present person. I mean, some people go, well, what's next? Well, what is next is spending that time with the family and yeah. being that present father this figure. Is next. And, this know, is next. You yeah. are next yeah. and you're enjoying <laughs> it. We've you're arrived. Really That's it, right? We take, like, we, we go away, take weekends off. We go fishing. I, you know, I go to all the kids' stuff at school, school yeah. sports, all that sort of jazz. And I love it. It's yeah, what they'll remember. I think, yeah. I think that's a great, yeah, that's a great lesson for anyone out there that, you know, you could, you know, the, the work could be there if you wanted it to that's be right, there yeah. and you wanted to go six, seven days a week and all that sort of stuff. But this time that you're, that you're spending with your kids, it's, it's, it's only going to be there for a certain that, amount of time. That's exactly right. So, At what cost, really? That's right. And yeah. like, you, can, you can work and make as much money as you want, but mm. you don't get the time back. So no, that's, that's very right. important. And I think they'll say that honestly for me, Miles and Jason. Yeah. That's basically the, the core of our business. Yeah, yeah, correct. And I think, yeah, and that's the healthy bit, isn't it? Because if you're in business with somebody that's like, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that, and money's the main driver, that relationship breaks. It but breaks. the fact that you guys are fully on the same page, which which I think, yeah, it's super healthy, super healthy what you guys are doing. Yeah, that's, well, no, that's good. Well done. Awesome. Anything you want to leave us with? Bryce? No, no. Speak to Little Fish, get some more jobs. <laughs> <laughs> so next year's nice and cruisy. <laughs> so plug yourself. Yeah. Where do you find yourself? Uh, just J- find us on Instagram, JBM Group, um, or send us an email, info at jbmgroup.com.au. Or just send Littlefish an email and that, we'll, and we'll right. hook you up. There you go. We'll, we'll manage we'll that shit. Ticket, yeah. Um, but, but yeah, amazing. And I think, yeah, I think, the, um, I think uh, things are getting better um, and hopefully we're through the worst of it. I think we are, yeah. Yeah, that's my opinion anyway. I think yeah. the, the people, the inquiries coming through, the investments coming back and um, the world's not ending, which... It never does, well, but good. people people don't seem to believe that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's coming back. Um, you know, trades, materials, all that sort of stuff. The competition, the normality, I think, is coming back. So places like you, mate, will, will only kick goals and thrive. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Awesome. Awesome. Good on you, Bryce. Please like, share, subscribe. That was a little fish friends ep. Our fourth one, last one for Thanks. season two. On to the bigger and better things, season three. How Brucey, that? bigger first and better one. things. So oh, and first one for H. First one for H, little fish and friends. Put in the bank, mate. In the bank, tick it <laughs> off. No one can take that from you, mate. In the mate. bank. Put on your resume. Please, like, share, subscribe. That was a great pod. Plenty of people going to get value out of that. Make sure you share it around. See you at the top. You. People want to be part of a winning team. People can find a better version of themselves. If they choose. Hmm. You just need to go start some shit. Action is all that matters. Be a man of your word. I think I look back now and I'm like, whoa, that took some guts. Be kind. Be kind. Be kind. See you at the top. New episode every Wednesday.